Welcome back. It's Terry. Uh, I'm going to do, as it shows, galoosh designs. Um, I've been asked before about how to do these. It's very hard to explain. It's much easier doing it this way. I was actually only asked today about it. Has has happened previously. So I thought I would show you uh, basically how to do them. Um, just give me two seconds. Okay, I'm back. I'm just making sure this is recording okay. Uh, now this, I thought I'd show you this way. You may remember this, this RDK I did recently. Um, I did this galoosh in this background. Now, it's interesting in itself that a galoosh is a, is a engine turn pattern. Um, so it's always, they vary dramatically in design, but they always, um, the pattern reproduces or is it's uh, there's a there's a certain pattern to it they vary this one in, in itself was unusual because these here are a continuation if you actually follow these arcs around it's a continuation of that pattern these are quite different so I had to do that as a separate exercise but how I actually go about it is it's anyway if you can follow bear with me I will attempt to show you that's the one because I've just I've, I save all these, so that's that is that one there. Now, how I've got to that point is there's multiple layers to this. I actually start. That's actually how I start there. What you need to do with a galoosh pattern is really study it closely and try to work out when they've actually set up the tooling for it. Their their rotation points basically. Some of these rotate from the center. The pattern is always generated from the center. This one I worked out didn't. And it actually, that's probably a better way to show you, it start. there's the centre there of my work area. I've set this up as I would normally do, um, 2000 by 2000, and that's the intersecting point. So that's the centre there. Now this one doesn't generate from the centre. There is a downside to that, and actually I'll start that sentence again. If I go back here um, and move that up there and overlay it, you can, if I zoom in, you can actually see that it follows this curvature here, which is, if I toggle it off and on, I'm trying to follow these lines. And if you do that, it's a bit of trial and error, work out where it's pivoting from, it pivots from this point down here. Now, the, the downside of that is, and I can see why they've done it, they wanted this to remain blank in the center here. Don't ask me why, they just did. Um, and that's why I've ended up with, if I close that, ended up with this blank area in here. I cheeky poke it a bit but if I take that off um, that's so again I moved it what am I talking about that there is a if I continually move that round you end up with that that's actually and then I manipulate that and I end up getting these internal areas cut out which I then change into that and the the gaps in between are a different issue I join them together that's basically what you get there but what I was trying to get at and I'll get into more detail in a moment is you end up with this rather odd because these these lines if you like that you're drawing are not coming back to the center they're coming to this weird point down here so some are even off center most are in the center this way some can vary they can be generated out of a sub dial here a sub dial here i've got one actually on this logo there which is that one or that one there same one um that is actually up here from a sub dial just based on its design but because this is not in the center and I'll show you if I come back down here. That's probably a better one. I've cut that out. Didn't have to, but you can see it. The pattern doesn't start generating to about here. So all this is going to end up with nothing in it. Whereas if you draw, the, I'll call them arcs for the, so, for the sake of this. If you draw an arc out of here, space it fairly widely and have it fairly narrow, you'll actually get the continuation of this pattern virtually running to the center. So it depends on entirely on the pattern you want, the pattern you're trying to duplicate, if you're trying to duplicate one. So to show you very briefly, I'll put that back where it belongs. What I'll do, as I said, that's the finished one there. I'll start a new layer, and I can show you this fairly quickly. Now if I draw an arc, or a circle, I've just 
taken the expand from the center and the fixed off so I've gone I wanted to go to the very outer edge of my work area so I'll take it to there zoom back out zoom in and I want that I do want it to pivot from the center this time I'll pick a point not overly relevant make it a bit wider than that about there now I do want this to be equal because I want Galoosh patterns are very, as I said, very symmetrical is perhaps a better word. Um, it's not, there's nothing random about it whatsoever and they do it that way so they can set up the machines to do a really fine pattern and just keep reducing it. Um, I'll try that, just let me check that back to the centre. Actually I'll get rid of, I, this is related to what I was doing before, I don't need that. Now it's just a quick way to do this see what I'm doing don't have to it's just basically me now if I do that whoops go back to circle to the center add a ridge there make sure that lines up there something like actually I'm going to make it wider that's not right if I actually use that I'll go out to about the edge of that you can see that this as I said you can see why this doesn't match by by pivoting it from the center you can see it throws this out so it's not that's why I had to play around with this and found out if I moved it down here and moved it over I finally fixed the point down here somewhere but I don't need to do all of that on this one I just want to show you basically how you do a galoosh um, I'll make this a bit wider so go there also we'll get rid of another guideline here in a moment that's just sitting there for no particular reason get rid of both of those that don't need to be there there you go now if I draw wait uh, go back to the I call it circle they call it the ellipse there now I believe actually you can do this in Photoshop much easier so I've been told I've never used it I've used it slightly but I've never used it that much so I don't know now I will fill that I actually tend to use a color you can actually do any color here because it's kind of irrelevant um, but I tend to use oops make that the active just to get that color that's all I've done go back there turn that off fill that if you remember control left arrow will fill that which looks very strange at the moment but now I want to take most of that back out again so I want to end up and I know through trial and error on this now that's four pixels up maybe I'll do it six basically what I want to do is leave uh, two three four five six I'll show you what I'm doing I'm going to take all the center out of this so I'll leave uh, two three four five six two three four five six okay just hit delete so that gives me that perfect now ellipse I suppose you should call it now you can cut that in half what I want to do is reproduce this and you'll see the pattern it generates you can cut half of that out by that and do just use this half keep moving it round 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 you'll end up then you don't get the crossover as you do actually in this pattern it'll only be one way you then have to reproduce it use this directional tool to send all the curves back the other way and then overlay one over the other that's all a bit pointless if you get rid of that use that whole thing and just keep and I'll show you if I go control C control V I'm moving it from the central pivot point so hit rotate and I know it's about two and a oops sorry you need to highlight these or it doesn't work 2.5 now it highlights I know and I've based that on the fact that all I'm doing is really creating these in here that are about six wide and I know because I measured it earlier that if I go from if I pick a point where it's fairly equal it doesn't really matter this will do it's about from the center of this line center of that line it's about 20 and I know at two and a half degrees which works out really nicely because it's an easy way to scale something because what I'll do now is control C whoops we'll go back there, go there. 
Oops, no, go backwards. There. Oops, I'm not making that active. There. Now, Control C, Control V. So, Control C copies it. Control V, I can rotate that two and a half degrees. Control V again. Now, I don't want to copy both. I just want to keep moving this internal, or the first one I laid, two and a half degrees. So, the next one becomes five degrees. I'll only do a handful of these, and I'll show you how GIMP's all about shortcuts, basically. Now, the next one becomes seven and a half. And the next one becomes 10, and 10's a very, obviously, easy multiple to rotate around. So Control v again, rotate, change the angle now to, whoops, 10 degrees. Now, if you go Control c which copies the whole lot, Control v you can see they all highlight. Hit rotate, same process, but now because that's 10 degrees in value of, of totals, you can now rotate that 10 degrees. And I would normally pause this and wouldn't show you this because it's a bit boring. Now you go 20 degrees, but I will show you what I do. Um, I'll do this up to Control V. You could stop at any point basically and reproduce everything is there. I always try to do things in multiples of 90s if I can because it's basically a quarter of a circle. It's just easy to work with, 40. And there is also another reason for that. So bear with me, this is a little mundane. But you can actually see, that's 50 degrees there now. See these are crossing over, so your pattern's starting to develop. It's quite intriguing what you can actually, 60, um, what patterns you can generate just by messing about. Um, oops, 70 I think, I kind of lost track where I was, yeah 70. Um, you can also, I have actually done some, where this, actually I'll do this before I lose track of it, up to 90 at least, 80, 90, 90, right, now, what I have done on some is where you just pick one of these arcs, this very first one, I've done it much wider, it takes a while to work out how to do it, but much wider, much thicker, maybe is a better word, much thicker here than it is in the central point. And it gives you interesting effects, basically like that. You can see these are much wider, this end, than they are in the center. So you can do, it's virtually limitless. Anyway, now, if I go Control C, that's 90 degrees. Control V, I can rotate the whole lot. Once again, this is one of those shortcuts. Rotate it 90 degrees. And the reason I do that, because now I've got 180, I can reproduce the whole thing. Now if you go Control v again and go minus 90 degrees, I don't know why, but GIMP has always... No, I shouldn't say struggle, but it's graphically not as good going in the negative than it is going, or going anti-clockwise than it is clockwise. I can't actually tell you why it has always done it. I just notice if you go backwards in things, or anti-clockwise, tends to be not as crisp as it is clockwise, so I always try to do this. Uh, so if I go Control c Control v because it's 180 degrees, and rotate it 180 degrees, I will have... There it is there. If I get rid of the highlight. So that's that finished pattern, is how it ends up if you do the whole thing. Now the rest of them here is really quite simple. Depends on, you can leave that in that grey colour if you like, I always use, and as you'll see, if I go back to this one, is this metallic one. And I do it actually for several reasons, but I, I start with a base image. You can see these shadows, and I'll, I'll show you this in a minute. Um, so you get that effect at the end of it, which I like. It's not just flat or boring, but it also accepts colors dramatically. Um, these here, they are, I don't actually have the silver version. That's one we're sort of messing around in the background with now but that's a good example you can do a blue black you do it accepts color really really well which i which i like um anyway that's it there now what i'll do if i'll open as layer i will probably that one i'm referring to is actually that image there now i have these on file I made them years ago um and you need something you can bring back with several times 
and it has to be identical or otherwise you start getting mismatches of you know even it's minor detail but you're better off working off one image whatever it's going to be and in this case it's this one so I'll drop that underneath there just hide it for the moment go make that the active layer now you need to basically highlight you start whichever way you like I will do these I want to highlight these now this won't be quite as accurate you could do it more accurate if you want to sit here and mark every one of these out and you could see how many years that would basically take you which is absurd so I go back to this one uh, I'll pick a point to zoom in a bit here now if I go delete it's taken those out because they're the active ones now at this point I don't want to so control Z to go backwards control I to invert your selection and then just go delete it leaves those ignore the ones that are now deleted we'll get back to that later control A just takes the highlight off just annoys me um, and you also need this to now I want to actually put a concave type pattern on this so layer whoops layer layer effects bevel and boss um, now this will be this will be an inner bevel um, I know it'll be probably about 10 something like six about four maybe I'll take the color of the white up take, this is for shading uh, black down a little to about 40 linear merge with layer I'll try that this will actually be wrong and I'll show you why in a moment because the shadow okay now I don't mind the the appearance but you can actually see that it's well perhaps if I undo that show you what I'll do here if I go um, image guide no I don't want the one uh, well, no we'll do layers whoops go back into exactly the same thing bevel and boss now if I go down change that direction from up to down show you what it does see it's now showing the shade see I always as I said before I like the light coming in from here 10 to 11 as I call it um, and that would be correct because you can see the shadow on top and the highlight on the lower section if I take it back again this is where Bevel and Boss if I go I perhaps should have pointed this out before I did it it's because you're working on a bit hard to explain um, but that's the reverse you've now got the light on here now you might think that's a bit weird but I've taken this section out here this this area here is actually risen above this so the shadow should actually be on top and the highlight underneath you have to trust me on that it's just the way it is uh, Bevel and Boss go back here uh, we go down I won't spend too much time on this it's really just to show you how you do it now I don't mind that and see the interesting thing is this is where you can't on these sort of patterns you can't just copy something here and drop it and then maybe rotate it 180 degrees because the problem with that is it throws then the reflection on the wrong side where it's dark up the top here will become dark down the bottom it needs to be white down the bottom so using this sort of tool allows for that so you can't just copy and move over uh, the shadows will be completely wrong um, so that's that you can clean that up a little maybe I'll go back to that in a minute if we go back to our original pattern uh, file openers layer and I'll bring that same 2k steel that one drop it under there again just take it off but this is as I said that's the same pattern that I used here so you can actually if I do that uh, the one I've cut out it disappears doesn't matter where that is sorry now you can see it there that's perhaps a better way of doing it um, these are the ones I'm now playing with but this pattern in here is the same because I'm going to use the same layer anyway we digress if I go back here highlight this again this time I actually want to choose these these in all these intersecting points get rid of that go down here go delete once again see I had to invert it because depends on whether you pick this and have to invert it or pick this and have to invert it you'll soon work it out because you just go control I delete now it leaves those but you see these are not perfect 
They never will be unless you want to sit here and mark them all out by hand and that would just, that would take forever. I'm not aware anyone could do that. You must take that off by the way to do when you actually start editing this. It just, I don't know why, it's just the way it's always been done. Um, so we get layer effects, bevel and boss. Now I need, I know I need to reverse this. I won't at the moment, actually I'll take this also down because now we're doing these. Eight, try about six actually, six, six, four, we'll leave those the same. So all I've done is altered that and it's the depth. I don't want it quite as in your face and I'll show you what I mean if I do that. But you'll actually see once again these are back to front. See, it's the shadows on top. And that should be light on top, so it's the reverse. And if you put it with that, it doesn't kind of look right. It doesn't really make sense, as you can see it. Yeah, to me, it doesn't make sense. So we go there. We go backwards. Control Z. Go back here. Layer effect. Bevel and boss. Now change this to direction as up, which is normal, because this is going to be sitting above these cutouts. So you'll actually get now the light on top, shadow underneath. So if you put that back with it, see how it actually now makes sense? Except you do get this. And this is what I was referring to before, that you can't avoid it because the cutouts out here just disappear into nothing. There is nothing for it to work on. Some people I've seen, and I've actually done it as well, you could reduce it, as I said, by working, um, uh, making things much larger, but this is the size I wanted to show you. Uh, but what's your easiest way really to do, which is what I did on the other, if I come back here, this is the one I was playing with, this is the RDK one, that's one layer, that's the other layer, ended up with this, that was me messing about. I just take the same image once again, this one I've been working off, cut that ring out and drop it on top. And in this case, because of that that design, that's what I wanted anyway. Um, so there's various ways. I've seen other ones take an image of that whole thing, reduce it down, sit it inside. Some people like it. It is what it is. Um, so all I was going to get at before, now that's the two that we've done. Now, as I said, I can, and I will show you this. I will file, whoops must be open as layers or that doesn't work starts a new window otherwise uh, 2k steel same thing see that see those highlights there they're harder to see but they are still there particularly if you pan back you can actually see it now I prefer that effect you can do it, do it whichever way you like but that's my preference so all I was going to suggest is you take oops expand from the center because this one I do want a perfect circle you got to pick a point where it's basically going to cover I mean there's no point doing it there or you'll have these weird gaps of nothing so I'm kind of trying to pick a point about there maybe in one use that make that active control I to invert delete the outside a just to get rid of that highlight and that's basically it um, now you can as I said it's see these little tiny little grips you'll never see this close anyway but you can go into this I think I've shown you this before which is a download this GMIC that I downloaded it allows you to fix a few issues all that's doing is highlighting that layer you can zoom in now if I go repair, I know it's antistropic. Take it up to about 100. Take that flat out. Zoom in on those. You can see that's really doing nothing. But if you can actually see, if I go to about 4, I'm not sure how well that's showing, but it's smoothing these outer edges off. Go to about there. I don't mind. Apply. This is one of those things that takes, you will if you zoom in on this, see a little change. Um, does tend to blur it a little. Um, so we go OK, and you can actually see what that's done is highlighted this. But what we can do, that's the overhead one. We can do exactly the same thing on that. GMIC, apply, and that will probably get rid of it. Because it's going to do the same thing to that. 
as I said, not super critical. So if you zoom out, you can't see any of it. It's kind of irrelevant, really. Um, what you can also do, and I have done this before, I will show you this while I'm here. We're almost done here, by the way. Uh, get rid of that. Um, no, I will actually go back to... Get rid of that. No, we'll go to that one. That'll be easier. If I highlight all of these again get out of there I'll bring these back but what I'm actually going to do is a drop shadow on these points and you can do this once again whether you think it's needed depends on what you're trying to get out of it but if you go to filters uh, light and shadow drop shadow don't want it that extreme this will only be this is the offset so the sun's coming, or the lights, sorry, not the sun, lights coming in from this way. I won't do much. It'll only be about five wide. Uh, chop that off, or that just has a fit. Uh, go OK. And you can actually see, sorry, that's... Go okay, Control Z. What you got to do, Control I. I want the shadow on the inside. What that was doing was throwing the shadow on the outside. Repeat, drop shadow. Click off that. Now you can see there's the drop shadow there. I can actually put that, you know, that's the... It's actually under... What I've done is tucked it under that one. That's that one. So Because technically the drop shadow should be just on this layer here. So you can see that's on 60%, which is... Let me just... So you can see that better. You can wind that down a little if you want. It just highlights it more, and you know a good example is I drop the drop shadow off. That's what it does. Just makes it darker, and you can take that right up to 100%, which will probably look really weird. It does that, but it, personal preference depends on what you want to do. Um, I'll get rid of that because I actually don't like it, but you can. So that's basically how you do a galoosh. Um, you then save that as a complete image. Um, which I'll actually do. I'll just quickly say we'll export that as no, I better call it something else, not that. I'll just call it Galoosh for this for this exercise. Go to the desktop. We'll export that. And what that'll do is it'll save everything I've got on there, which are those three layers, which is what as a as a finish. And what uh well actually what I'll do is I'll open it in a new window. So if I go galoosh, actually it should be in recent. Yes it is right there. It's opened itself in a new window, so it's just that. There is nothing else in there. But this is where you can then start going into colours, my colorizer, and you can see instantly it just takes colours, whatever colour you want quite nicely. Um, nice red, you can play around with the saturation of just how red you want it. You know, so for me that doesn't do anything, but uh, and then the lightness and darkness, you can go into some, you know, something like that, which I think is kind of cool. Um, so you, for instance, you can do that, go OK, and then you can start messing around once again with colours, curves, you can start doing this sort of thing. It's um, I've probably got, yeah, it won't like this now because of what I've been doing to it. But you can, um, filters, uh, go into, um, decor. No, not decor. Uh, combine artistic. No, you can clothify it, but I won't do that in this case. Um, you can do a million things to it anyway. It doesn't really matter, but that's it there. Um, so hopefully you've learned something from that and I'll uh, talk to you on the next one. Bye.